Good day, everyone. This is Jody Orsi, and I am with State Senator Kristen Phillips Hill. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. And this is uh, segment number two. Um, we just got done talking about the coronavirus, which I said um, I said to you off air. Um, that was the hard one. And now we're into the, the, the easier stuff, <laughs> your story, voting, etc. But maybe uh, because you're a humble person, maybe this is actually the hard one. Well, I don't enjoy talking about myself. I, I love to talk about the issues, but I'm happy to answer whatever questions you may have. Okay. Well, um, you are the, uh, um, a representative in, in the form of a state senator of the 28th district in Pennsylvania, which covers uh, a big portion of York County. Mm -hmm. uh, you're very fond of, of, of the 28th district. I we're am. we're I very am. fond of you. Oh, thank um, you. Can you describe, I, I know a little bit about, it, about your history, starting with, with the school board um, at Dallastown, which is my alma mater. Um, how did you, how and why did you get into politics in the first place? And, and if you could kind of explain your progression to the point now where you're a state senator. You know, I, I grew up in a family that was um, of mixed party and um, I, I always listened to very interesting conversations and debates. I, my grandmother Phillips was an ardent Republican. My grandfather Phillips was an ardent Democrat. Um, one sat at either end of the table and it was like watching a tennis match, you know, they would love their volleys. And so I was always interested. Um, and just fascinated. I can remember the first um, elected individual I met. It was Senator John Warner of Virginia. I was um, in elementary school singing in Philadelphia with my elementary school choir for the bicentennial. <laughs> and um, it was the first elected official I met. And, um, you know, uh, always interested in what was happening, what was going on, and went to college to become a teacher and decided that wasn't the path for me. And I remember very vividly having the conversation with my dad, I'm going to be an art history major. And my father said, I did not send you to school to sell drapes and sears for the rest of your life. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with selling drapes and sears. And I said, fine, I'm going to be a political science major. So <laughs> I majored in political science and, um, eventually went to graduate school in public policy, um, spent a little time working on the Hill and, um, met my husband, which took me on a whole different trajectory of um, becoming a mom and eventually starting my own small business and, you know, supporting his career with the defense department and, um, wound up in the school board and then in the state house. And I feel really fortunate that I'm, I'm able to be in this position and, um, it, it's truly an honor. And I, find that every day, um, I never take for granted that it's not about me. It's about the 272,000 people that I'm responsible to back here in York County. And my job is, is to be their voice and to do their will in our state capital and make sure that a little bit of York County infuses everything that happens there. Yeah. So as we record, it's uh, May 14th, and we're actually just a few days away from the registration deadline for the June 2nd primary. Right. Um, so, you know, I've always thought that civic responsibility in voting was important. Not everyone's convinced. Um, so the question that I'll pose is, uh, why is it important to vote? And, you know, we talked about uh, a, a Pew Research study that um, kind of assessed reasons why people didn't vote this past election. And, and honestly, the, the voter turnout um, in, in the past couple of elections was pretty good comparatively. Um, but there's uh, pretty big percentages of people who, who don't vote that you know, the reason is my vote doesn't matter. Right. Or there was even like, I think like 3% said they forgot, which is just <laughs> mind boggling to me. But um, can you kind of speak to the importance of voting and even specifically to the point of the person saying, well, I don't want to get out there to the polls because my vote doesn't matter anyway? Well, your vote does matter. And there was a election for the state representative in Northern Adams County and part of Western Cumberland County. Um, and that representative won by one vote, wow. one vote. He became a state representative 
and I will say, um, probably one of the most intelligent, articulate and committed, um, individuals. Um, he has been a tremendous voice throughout this entire coronavirus pandemic, um, for, for the people of his district. And just imagine if that one person hadn't gone and voted. Yeah. Um, so your vote can most definitely make a difference. And oftentimes I've heard, you know, people say, well, as a Christian, you know, I don't really need to engage in the public square. And, and what I always say in that situation is that government makes a lot of decisions, a lot of decisions about how your tax dollars are spent, um, how children are educated, how, um, healthcare, um, is administered here. Like there's so many things that your elected officials make decisions on every day that impact your life. Um, and, and then I will also say this, um, if you don't engage, if you choose not to vote, then you are abdicating that decision to someone who may not share your views or your values, who may choose to put someone else into that position um, that you may not agree with. So I think that's why it's really important. The other thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people will come out and they'll say, I'm going to vote in that big presidential election. They come out every four years, right? That's really important. The president is, is an important position, but oftentimes too, those local governmental, um, officials, school board and, uh, you know, borough council and, judges make a big difference. And I will tell you that back in 2008, one of my friends, um, a good person who probably thought they would never wind up in the judicial system, her son was struck and killed by an impaired driver. And they found themselves in the court system, um, you know, seeking justice, but also making sure that no family ever has to go through what they went through with the loss of their son. And thankfully, um, a, there was a good person sitting, um, in that position on the bench to, to make a good decision when that case was brought before them. So decisions, um, voting, um, it really does matter. Yeah. And the idea of voting, I mean, we, we might take it for granted as Americans or Pennsylvanians, but like our, our style of government is so unique and, and the power that we, that we have is, is just amazing. I mean, we, we elect every, every position from the president down to, you know, like a County coroner. Right. And it's, it's, uh, one of my responses when people ask me that is why wouldn't you, Right. why wouldn't you vote? Right. And, and look, um, May 18th is the deadline to register to vote. If you have not registered to vote, um, you know, it's really easy. I'm assuming you're watching this online. Um, you can go to the Pennsylvania Department of State and you can register online. So Pennsylvania Department of State, I think it's uh, pavotes.com. Um, check it out and, and register to vote. And, um, you know, it is probably, um, I think one of the most meaningful and significant things that we can do as citizens. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, the, the number that you can text. Um, I'm probably going to get that wrong, but there's a virtual, uh, voting assistant. That's, uh, it's like an application, a mobile application. Um, that's on our, on our Instagram page and our Facebook page. So if you want to really have an easy time, just te I think it's text I vote to a, f a four digit number. So check that out as well. I wish I could remember that off the top of my head. But my, qu my next question is, um, for Christians specifically, there's, um, nearly seven out of 10 people in America I identify as, as being a, a Christian. Mm -hmm. Um, why is it important specifically? And I know Christians are, are sometimes known for really, um, voting on, particular social issues, whether you do that or not, is kind of irrelevant to the question of why is it important specifically for Christians to get out to the poll? Well, you know, I touched on it earlier that, you know, um, if your faith is, is really important to you, you hold certain views and values, um, 
near and dear and, and is very important. You, you want to make sure that you vote for a person who, um, you know, a, aligns with your worldview and, um, will, will make decisions that, you know, you are most likely to agree with. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're not always going to agree with every last thing. I will tell you that, you know, my husband may not even agree with every vote that I cast, but, you know, I always say you have to, to look at, at that individual in some total and what their record is and, and what those issues are that are important to you. I know there's some people who vote on one issue. There's some people who vote on multiple issues. Um, you know, figure out what it is that is, is really most important to you and find that candidate that aligns with your views and, um, you know, vote for them. Yeah. So you, you belong to the Republican party. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but aside from party, um, if you were to sum up, uh, a, your philosophy for, for state government and B, uh, just kind of your goals, uh, in, in your tenure of what you'd like to see in Pennsylvania, um, how would you, how would you sum that up? You know, um, Again, my my job is to make sure that I do the will of the people in this community. I think communication is really important to me, um, and and certainly, you know, I, I laid out those goals and and you know what I stood for when I was elected in 2018, and then here we are in 2020, and all of a sudden, what I need to do. A lot of things have been put on the back burner because now this is is such a you know the coronavirus pandemic and and government's response and and fighting against overreach and and assuring that our people have their constitutional rights that we're balancing lives and livelihoods. All of a sudden, that's been pushed to the forefront. Now that is, I think, my my primary focus. Um, but you know, I, I got involved in public life, I think because, um, you know, of a desire to take care of people and to make sure that government works well for people. I mean, obviously now government's not working very well for people. If, if you've been out of work because the government shut your business down for eight going on nine weeks and you still haven't been able to receive unemployment compensation from a system in which you paid into for that rainy day, yeah. then that's government that doesn't work. And, you know, I, I think that my, my job is to make sure that government works for the people that I represent. Yeah. So, um, for those out, those of us out there that, um, aside from voting, want, mm -hmm. want to get involved in any way, um, what are some avenues, uh, for someone who, who's maybe passionate about politics or just wants to get the word out about, um, their party or their, their values aside from voting, where would you point them? You know, I, I would say, um, check out social media, um, you know, you're, you're watching this online. Um, every elected official, um, down to those, um, small municipalities, most of them have, um, a Facebook page, a, a Twitter page, Instagram, some, some have Instagram, um, or a website, you know, follow them go to a meeting. Um, you know, local government is so accessible. You can find their schedule. You can sit on a meeting. Um, a lot of things are being conducted via zoom now. So you can watch from the comfort of your home. Um, it, you know, if, if you're really bored and you don't have anything else to do, um, channel 186 is PCN and you can watch, um, the house and Senate session and, um, you can see what your government is doing. Um, and, and communicate with your elected officials. I mean, I said it earlier, I will say it again. I do this job so much better when I actually know what's on your hearts, um, on your mind, what your concerns are, um, what's not working right for you. And, and that, that empowers me to be the best representative of the people. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, if, we, if, if all of us just assume that you're getting the memo, it, it's hard for you to have a barometer of, of what your, your district is sensing or, or feeling. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So one final question. Okay. This is, this is a doozy. Oh gosh. So you're not, right. you're not up for reelection this November. No, but, I am not. But looking forward, um, what's next? And I know I've asked you this in the past and, and maybe I'm, I'm overstepping my boundaries here, but it is a, is a future governor run possible for you? 
you never know where the Lord (laughs) is going to call you. And and I say that really with, with great humility. Um, you know, um, Growing up, we had this embroidered uh, piece that my mother had done framed and it hung on the kitchen wall where I sat every morning to eat my bowl of Cheerios before school. And it said, um, I shall pass this way, but once therefore any good that I can do, let me do it now for I shall not pass this way again. And, you know, just a, a really, I probably totally butchered that. Um, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? You, I, I feel really blessed and fortunate to have been entrusted, um, to serve the people. And, and I'm very focused on doing the best job that I can and, and where I'm called in the future. I don't know, but, um, I feel blessed and fortunate, um, to be able to, to do their will and, and, you know, make government work well for all the people in the 28th district. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and, Thank you. and I have to pass this your way. There, there's been, um, in just talking with some of our congregants, uh, a couple of people have actually said, you know, I'm proud of Senator Kristen Phillips. Oh my gosh. And I just okay. wanted to pass that on to you. I mean, it is, um, you're, you're actually not my representative. I'm over in Lancaster. But, they, they're um, good representatives in Lancaster County as yeah. well. Yes. Ryan yes. Allman. Yes. Ryan Almond's um, an exceptional human being. He's a really good guy. And, um, although we would love for you to come back to your County. <laughs> So, so that I, I did want to pass that along and we, we just think that you're doing a terrific job and, uh, we're glad that you're our state Senator. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Always an honor. I, I've well. had the honor of, of, of having you on a couple times and it's just, uh, it, it's awesome. Well, it's, it's great. I always enjoy it and, um, everybody, you know, stay well and, um, you know, hopefully soon we'll, we'll all be able to get together and, and enjoy each other's company and, and worship. So that wraps up this edition of the For Freedom's Sake video podcast. Thank you all for watching.